What is a switchgear room and what level of uh, disorder was taking place at that time? Um, yeah, the, the switchgear room is um, like a, a giant fuse box. If you think of the fuse box in your house or, um, or, or apartment, you know, there's a box on the wall with a lot of wires running in, in and out. Well, in a nuclear plant, one, there's a lot more wires, and two, the, the, they don't run on 100, 100 volts. They run on thousands of volts. So these wires are really, really thick. Um, and um, they go in and out of the switchgear room, um, and there's fuses in there as well uh, and, and switches. Well, what seems to have happened um, was that a, a wire or more than one wire overheated and caught fire. And now uh, the switchgear room has a, um, uh, a halon fire extinguishing system. It doesn't use water because the last thing you want to do is put water on, on um, wires. So the halon was re- injected into the room and put the fire out. So the flames were gone by the time the plant got there, but the damage was done. Um, so the um, uh, So the Fire department, the fire brigade on site, and they have a group of trained people that give up their whatever job they were doing and, and become firemen. So the firemen report to this area, and the smoke is so thick they can't go in. Um, seeing smoke, they said, well, let's call for backup, which is they called in the, the local fire department as well. And so now they've got professional firefighters there plus their own cadre. Um, the smoke is burning rubber, burning plastic, burning fused material, um, and it's toxic. So, again, they couldn't get into this area. Um, so, you know, it's interesting when they said they couldn't see a flame. Well, given all that smoke, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine you could see a flame, but obviously there had been one because there was smoke. But in any event, they had a, they had a fire that produced a lot of smoke. The halon put it out, but they couldn't get into the area uh, because the smoke was toxic. Um, so then they'll bring in air filters and uh, fans and pump that air out. And um, meanwhile, at least two of the wires that ran into this room were, were wires that powered their um, cooling pumps for the fuel pool. That, um, so, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Let us uh, go to the next part, and here we get great specificity about the failing systems that end up uh, with a uh, disabling of the cooling systems. This is from 10 minutes after the first announcement or noticing of the smoke and or the fire. And here we quote from the official Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, event report at Fort Calhoun. At 9.40 CDT, an alert, HA2EAL1, for operating mode less than 200 10 degrees Fahrenheit, was declared for a fire affecting the operability of plant safety systems required to establish or maintain safe shutdown. Time of fire was 9.30 CDT. Control room received multiple alarms and 480 volt bus 1B4A amps were observed to be oscillating. Bus 1B4A was secured and buses 1B3A and 1B3A to 4A were lost. Halon activated properly. At 0956 Central Daylight Time, all notifications to appropriate personnel were completed. At 10 hundred hours CDT, 4160 volt outlets 1A2 and 1 through 1A4 were secured to facilitate firefighting. Spent fuel pool cooling was lost as a result of the de-energized buses and the licensee entered AOP-36 for loss of spent fuel pool cooling. Heat up rate was determined by STA. Current time to boil for the spent fuel pool is 88.3 hours. Spent fuel pool cooling is currently back in service. This condition is being reported pursuant to 10 CFR, etc., etc., for declaration of an emergency class specified in the licensee's approved emergency plan. Do you get a gist of some of those buses and uh, how huge or heavy they are? Yeah, well, we hear about. 4,000 volts, that's, um, you know, your house is 100, and uh, that's roughly the size of the power line that runs down the street. You know, it's a 
Mm-hmm. It's a big power line because these pumps are huge. So in order to go into the room, um, they had to what what you know, some of the fuses had blown, but they had to deliberately turn off other uh, other wires, and um, uh, in the process turned off the wires that were uh, powering the the fuel pool. And the other part of that was that they were talking about the oscillation. But that means that doesn't mean that the wire was moving. That meant that the voltage was swinging wildly. So the control room operators are seeing numerous enunciators. That's you know, like the little dashboard light, you know, engine problem. Well, they probably had 20 or 30 little engine lights saying engine problem, engine problem popping up all over the, um, all over the plant. Um, now, in the background here is this flood, you know, so these operators are focused on the flood, and all at once they get blindsided by a, a fire in the switch guard, in the switch gear room. So the um, the other part of that, then, is that they, um, uh, uh, the FTA, that's the shift technical advisor, so an engineer who happened to be there then, uh, figured that they had uh, about 80 hours before they boiled the fuel pool, and... Um, uh, that's probably, you know, that's a, a back of the envelope calculation. And uh, but they had a couple of days to, uh, before they boiled the fuel pool dry. Um, go ahead. Okay, uh, next item from the event report, and this is as of uh, one fifteen p.m. local time. That would have been uh, two thirty in the afternoon Eastern Daylight Time. At thirteen fifteen Central Daylight Time, Fort Calhoun Nuclear Station has exited. Alert HA2EAL. It has been confirmed that no fire remained in the vital area. Plant shutdown cooling remained in service and spent fuel pool cooling was restored and temperature verified to be lowering. The licensee has also exited Alert HA3EAL1 after it was confirmed that the environmental conditions from the event and associated halon discharge does not affect the ability to safely operate or safely shut down the reactor due to being in mode 5 and shut down cooling remaining in service. Fort Calhoun remains in unusual event HU1EAL5 for river level greater than 1,004 feet elevation as reported under a prior uh, advisory. Well, what they're saying there is when mode five means that there's no power being generated and, and the plant is basically um, stopped. Um, so had this been at, at a different power level, mode one, two, three, for instance, um, th- this might have had a different outcome. Um, they, they fired back the pumps. And it's interesting because the swimming pool is roughly 50 feet by 50 feet by 50 feet. It's a lot of water. And if you figure out his calculation there that it was heating up 50 feet by 50 feet by 50 feet of water was heating up at about two degrees an hour um that's that's a pretty quick heat up of of a massive amount of water um so then they they're they're not saying that there wasn't damage but what they're saying is they've got the smoke out they've got the um uh they can they can determine that the damage allows them to turn back on the pumps they turned off, uh, but they're in no situation where they can. Um, they now they've got a, a major repair in front of them, which um, they really don't have a clue how significant it was or what the causative event was. But they can exit the emergency because they've turned those pumps back on, the, the refueling. Uh, water pumps, the fuel pool uh, pumps, rather. Um, they can exit the, the emergency, and uh, essentially the NRC can stand down now. But that doesn't mean that the damage is fixed. As a matter of fact, it doesn't mean that they have figured out why the damage occurred. But they're basically saying that um, it's not going to get any worse. One other thing, Arnie Gunderson there was yet another anomaly. You might call it a, a human telecommunications malfunction. And s- some might find this disturbing, that when the plant entered its emergency condition or status, the procedure was to have been to notify all the plant personnel that were es- essential to operation safety and or maintenance to come quick to the plant. 
They were supposed to have been paged in order that they might 